Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here and welcome back to another tutorial video where today I'm going to attempt to make this part the 0502B step stool, which comes from our practice models or 3D modeling practice playlist over on the Too Tall Toby YouTube channel. And we're going to try to come up with the correct mass for this part, which it should be 2.43 pounds, uh, plus or minus 0 0.02 pounds. And I uh, just want to remind everybody, if you enjoy this type of content, if you feel like you're getting a lot of value out of it, please feel free to send me some value back. You can do that using the super thanks function down in YouTube. You can do it by going to twotalltoby.com and clicking on the little support link on the very first page. Or, of course, you could also do it by picking up one of these Too Tall Toby t-shirts. These are the softest shirts in the CAD game, and you will not be disappointed if you pick up one of these. All right, let's get into today's tutorial. Ow. Okay, so we're gonna build this thing in SolidWorks, and I think as always, it's a good idea to kind of get a basic game plan. We can look at the print here. We can see the print is in ABS material. It's working in inches. Uh, we can see that the model has symmetry here, so maybe it would make sense to create kind of half the model first and then mirror it. Um, that's probably going to be what my first sketch looks like, and I think I'll sketch that on the top plane. And then hopefully I'll be able to just do an offset at 0 0.75 to get that kind of inner step region. Uh, I'm also going to notice here that it looks like these fillets, the radius 0.5, radius 0.5, it looks like those fillets are captured here on the outside and then are offset in to that 0 0.25. So that lets me know that I really want to create those fillets first. And then probably my last feature would be to create the shell and the mirror. So I'll shell this thing out to the 0 0.25 in the mirror, and the shell will capture this uh, filleted geometry that we see here uh, on the inside. So that helps me understand the order in which my features need to be created. So once I have a good feel for a good basic game plan, let me get into my new command. This is going to be in inches. And then I'm going to go over to my materials. I'm going to choose ABS as the material. And then something that I like to do sometimes on these practice models is just change the color a little bit so that the color kind of matches what I've got on the print. Uh, it just makes it a little easier for me to kind of verify that what I'm looking at on the print is correct. Now I'm going to go to the top plane, begin a sketch, and I'm just going to draw half the model. So I'm going to start out with a line here that comes up to a height of eight inches. And once I have that line to eight inches, I can go back and touch the end point and then come off of that end point with a second arc. Now that arc is called out in the, uh, in the drawing at 26 inches for radius. So then I can kind of move that over a little bit, single click, come back, hold my mouse over the end point, come off of that end point and come off with a radius there. That's going to be a radius of 2.5 enter and I'll come around like so and then single click and draw a line here I don't really know what the length of that line is so I'm just going to kind of eyeball it up and hopefully get it close to the print and then I'm going to come back hold my mouse over that end point come around with another arc there that's going to also be at 2.5 it's 2.5 for all four corners and then I'm going to finish off here by coming back and touching that end point and then coming off of that end point with another arc here and this arc is going to be concentric to that upper arc so I really don't need to put in a radius value here so I'll just kind of drop this arc here like so and then we just need to add some relationships like this point needs to be coincident here uh, maybe kind of drag this off so it's sort of close to into place and then this point here needs to be coincident to this vertical line and then the final thing would be this arc hold control and this arc need to be concentric okay that takes care of that and then I can finish up here by putting in an angle 31.7 for the angle or 14 uh, from tangent to tangent. I wonder if I need both of those or if I could just do one. Sometimes we get drawings that have extra dimensions on them. You know, they really shouldn't, but hopefully those dimensions are not in conflict with one another. And as long as they're not, you can kind of choose which ones are gonna be the driving dimensions. So let's start out with that 14 dimension. So I'm gonna create a dimension here by holding the shift key on my keyboard. So I hold shift. You know, maybe at this point, maybe it is beneficial to get a doubled dimension. So I'll start out actually by creating a center line, and then I'll go smart dimension, hold the shift key, pick this arc here kind of close to the tangency point, pick the center line. You can see that gives me the dimension to tangent, and then I can uh, cross over that center line. Hmm, not getting the doubled dimension here when I cross over. Interesting. Let's see here. Maybe if I start with the center line, start here, hold shift, click here. Come across. Okay, now I'm getting the double dimension. That was interesting. 
Uh, wasn't expecting that. 14, enter. Okay, it's still not fully defined, so let me kind of drag this close to the correct location. Then I'm going to smart dimension again. I'm going to go from this line to this uh, vertical center line. And then for your angled lines, if you want to get the double dimension, you have to hold the shift key. So I'm going to hold shift here on my keyboard, shift, and then I can come across and I can get that doubled dimension. So cross over there and that's gonna be 31.7. And there we go, now we have a nice black fully defined sketch. If we wanted to, we could add an additional radius dimension here that is gonna come in as a driven dimension. You can see it shows up in gray. And a lot of times if I have driven dimensions, I'll click on them and then I'll come over here to my properties and add a parentheses to it just so that I know that it's, it's really just a driven dimension. But uh, that does look like it confirms everything on our sketch. Let's take that geometry and extrude it. So S key extrude, it's gonna come up to a height of one inches enter enter now at this point i'm going to create another sketch on the top plane select the plane begin a sketch orient the view i'm going to do a right mouse button select tangency and then offset entities i'm going to offset that to a distance of 0 0.75 and i'll finish that off by just creating a line here to close that off and S key extrude, and that's gonna go up to a height of 5.5. So because I sketched that on the top plane, I was able to put in the correct max height dimension. Um, as, you know, the instinct, your instinct might be to create that second sketch here on this plane, but then you're gonna have to do some math and you're not really gonna get the, uh, the correct design intent for that 5.5. So instead, just did a little bit of planning and decided to sketch on the top plane, make it a little bit easier for me. So we bring that up to 5.5, hit the green check mark. Now we're ready to add in those fillets. So S key fillet, this is gonna go in at a value of 0 0.5. So 0 0.5, we'll click on this edge here. The tangent propagation wraps that fillet around. We'll click on this edge here. The tangent propagation wraps that edge around. Right mouse button to finish that command. And then we can choose to mirror that geometry. So I'll pick this face here, features mirror. And this is gonna be a bodies to mirror. So I'll pick this body here, right mouse button to finish that. All right, this is looking good. We're ready to jump into the shell command. 0 0.25 for the shell thickness. Single click the face to remove and then right mouse button to finish that shell command. And now at this point, we can do what's called the final spin, which is where we look at the model, we look at the print. I've got my display set for tangent edges removed. So we could go in here and we could say view, display, tangent edges with phantom. And that way we're looking at the same kind of view as what we're seeing here on the print. But in doing that final spin, it does look like everything looks the same as the print. So let's go into our evaluate mass properties and 2.43 pounds is the correct answer. That is the answer we were looking for. So I'm very happy that uh, we were able to come up with the correct answer and that should do it for that tutorial. Um, I hope that you guys found that helpful. If you did, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, be sure to share this tutorial with other SolidWorks users. And of course, be sure to come back and join me for the next one. I will see everybody in the next video.